This one will be called Music Theory 2, and it will be in the Music Folder. Now, before I begin reading this, uh, what we're going to do, first of all, we'll be seeing pages. Sometimes you'll actually have to look at the page. Sometimes you will not, because... <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> because it is um, something that I will read to you. You don't need to look at but on some pages, you will need to look at it because I have important illustrations and I will point to what you are going to be looking at and why you're going to be looking at it. So some of this you will have to see, some of it you will not have to see. But before I begin, I will say one thing though. When I was at Westminster Choir College, when I first went there years ago, um, when I was only a freshman, I was brought in to help teach the course on music theory to students who had been there before I got there because I was so good at music theory. So I thought that was a nice honor for me to have that um, good chance to uh, do some deals with that. So now about music in general, we're going to start with the simple things, but it's not as simple as it seems because now you're seeing me, okay, that's visual and you're hearing me, that's vocal. So one is vision and one is sound. Now that's very important in music. Now as I read it to you, for example, about music, a special language. Now that's very important. Music is a special language. Music moves in time. It is a flow. It is something that you hear. It is performed. It has to be brought into time by players and singers. So it has a special language. The language has have to show a way to show the flow in time. So in the language you are turning something that is in time into something that is in space. Now we'll give you details about that as we go on. You are turning something you hear into something you see, okay? That is what you see on a page of music, okay? You are turning something you hear into something you see. That's what a composer does. What he hears in his mind, he's writing on a piece of paper. Now the performer does the reverse. He or she takes what they see and turns it into something that you hear like a player on the piano. He sees the notes, but what he does for you, he turns them into something you hear. Or an orchestra, all of them see the notes, but they have to turn them into something you hear. This is basically what the language of music is all about. Now, the next thing we're going to do with music here, we're going to talk about motion in music, how to measure sound. Because remember, music is time. It's a flow in time, as we said before. So, how to measure music. There are two basic kinds of motion in music. Now, this is very important. Number one, moving forward in time from fast to future. And within that is, and how fast or how slow you move from the past to the future. The second part is, moving up and down from high to low and low to high, and the relationship between more than one sound at a time. Now, that's very important. Motion in music. The language of music have to find ways to see this. This is done by symbols, pictures that stand for sound. Okay, pictures that stand for sound. Now we're going to get into what music looked like. So this is Musical Theory 2. It will be in the music folder. And we will continue shortly with the kind of symbols, pictures that stand for sound. We will return shortly.